This is Crown Heights, Brooklyn, the Jew capital of America and recently famous for the Jewish tunnels. And this is Dearborn, that guy, Jewish. Jewish. Muslim capital Tunnels. of America, recently in the news for this clip. Both of these groups have seen a rapid increase in harassment and hate with the ongoing war between the Palestinians and Israel in Gaza. But how different are these two religions? And what do they really stand for? On my way to Brooklyn to meet up with the Hasidic Jews in Crown Heights, I learned of Columbia University students protesting in support of Palestine, setting up a liberated zone on campus, and then this happened. Listen to me now! They are not letting me on campus! Civil right and civil right as a Jewish person to be on campus! I have a right as a professor! I am a professor here! I have every right to be everywhere on campus! You cannot let people that support Hamas on campus and me, a professor, not go on campus! Let me in now! Before I infiltrate the university and see their camp, I wanted to hear what some of the protesters had to say. Made it to Colombia. Let's see what's going on here. What are you here for? I'm here to protest against Hamas. Can you tell me what that means? Uh, what that means to me personally is uh, making louder noise than they're making. Hamas has done some terrible things and uh, they are a plague upon both. I don't want to say it, but this head is cooked. It is cooked. It's gone, my boy. He got that shag in the back. The Israeli and sorry. the Arab world, and sorry. I hope that Israel defeats them soon. Many, many people who feel that the Palestinian people are being slaughtered, and we're saying not in our name. My age said it about Vietnam, not in my name, apartheid, not in my name, and all the different mass movements for justice. And that's what's happening here, supporting the students. Some people think that Jewish people have to defend Israel. I come from a long line of Jewish people. My relatives were killed in the Holocaust, but mm. all of whom fought against injustice. And I think that is a tradition of Jewish people, not to continue to defend Israel blindly no matter what's happening. So when they say they stand for Hamas or they're in support of Hamas, what does that mean? From my perspective, and again, I understand that they might not understand what they're saying. Sure. What I see is I support the organization that killed my friend in Gaza three months ago. I support the organization yeah. that has been raining down rockets on civilians for literally decades. I cannot see a situation in which we will have peace with the Whoa. organization Hamas. We're here to support the Jewish brothers and sisters from all this anti-Semitic scum that are standing across from us. And release the hostages. Release the hostages is number one priority. What do you think they're here in support of? They're here in support of hate the Jews. They're not here to support Gaza. If they want to go to Gaza to help anybody of the Palestinians, they should go there to Gaza. So when someone says free Palestine, what does that mean? Yeah, what does that mean? That's a good idea. It, it actually means nothing. There really is no Palestine. There's no place on the map that, that's Palestine. And are most of these people here in support of Hamas or the Palestinians? And what is this? Most of these people don't know what they mean. I support yeah. the two solution. Um, so I do not align 100% with all of them. Imagine trying to do something peaceful, man. Free the people. And the man gonna tell you, <laughs> some of these people, they don't know what they're here for. Yeah. The agenda, which is probably a one-state solution or something, I fully support that Eddie, like, Palestinian human rights are important and like, even in war there has to be morality of war. We're offering uh, first-class free tickets to Gaza for any of these supporters who would like to go there and right. support Hamas and, you know, really support their cause. I mean, put their money where their mouth is and we'll actually pay for it. They can go fight. They could fight, they can do aid, they could bandage the militants, they could give blood to the militants, and, and all the girls here can go sleep with the militants and be one of their wives. It would be amazing. They, they, they would love it. They'd be welcome. Especially oh, what the hell? This nigga just offering people? Now that's what we're not doing. Nigga, how you just going to offer people without they will? They don't, how, how you know what they want to do? They probably was about to go to the water park tomorrow or something like that. Starbucks, maybe. Barnes and Noble. Somewhere, Walmart, Target. Nigga, they probably had a business meeting. They got to go to work tomorrow. Telling them they going to go over there. Just hang with them. Nigga, we don't know them. 
especially the LGBTQ community, especially would really love it there. I, partly, I can't believe people are spending this much money to get so stupid. And I, How much does it cost to go to school here? I believe it's around eighty, ninety thousand dollars a year. If you study history, especially if you're Jewish, you're a bit sensitive to this behavior because anti-Zionism is quickly turning into anti-Jewish. Feel safe to be Jewish out here in New York City, 2024. On college campuses, it's kind of terrifying. You get in there and you see people basically holding signs that I, I saw one that was, you know, the Jews on this campus are Hamas's next targets. It's like that is. Un unbelievable. I mean, I saw a photo that was um, literally protesters stopping Jewish students from getting into buildings. And it's like that's straight up anti-Semitism. I think there are people that are a little more naive in the camp that do have good hearts that want the right thing, which is just to send bloodshed in like for people that don't deserve it. But when you're getting, but you get lumped in with the worst ideologies that are a part of it, which includes wanting all Jews in the region just dead, supporting Hamas. You ask them what they think about Jews and I've seen people say scum, like scum of the earth, dirty, like yada yada yada. With so many opinions on both sides, I wanted to hear from the actual students occupying Colombia and understand their motives. But it turns out they only talk to pre-approved press. They said uh, they, they have no press policy right now. No pr What do you mean? We, we have designated people to talk to press. Designated people? Can we be on background? Uh, what do you mean? Like, you know what on background means? No. Hey, people in the chat, if he not going to tell us what being on background mean, what that mean? We got to know. Because he on camera talking about, can I be on background? Andrew don't even know what he talking about. He he is confused as I am right now. Uh, he might be on some dangerous type activities and shit. We can't have him in, in the background, you know. Ain't no telling what he gonna do. He seemed a little sketchy too. What does it mean? These oh. are serious journalists. They don't know what on background means. Are he a journalist? So, what do you mean? He said we're not serious journalists. We don't know what on background means. Given that I am, in fact, just a college dropout with a camera, I began scouting the entirety of the school's perimeter and quickly learned it was near impossible to enter the school without a student ID or without being pre-approved press. This place was crawling with NYPD and security everywhere. So I tried to sneak my way in with a group of other Columbia students going to school. Lock it up. Excuse me. Oh, hello. 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 Oh, I see. Go ahead and Got it. Okay, so we definitely had access. Uh, I blame Pasha's blue jacket right now. Point to blue jacket. So the question is, how does one get in the school? The police are blocking off every corner out here, doing their job, I get it, trying to remain peaceful out here, maintain the peace, etc. What's going on inside here? There are the teachers and the faculty, you know. Teachers, faculty, students? Yeah. A bunch of tents? Uh, there's students in the tents and the faculty and the teachers are up there. Got it. How many people would you say are in tents right now? Like a couple hundred? Yeah, a couple hundred. And that's been pretty consistent last couple days? Yeah, I think so. Probably an important thing right there. So my next idea was to go undercover as a protester, buy a scarf, put on two face masks, and raise the pitch of my voice to sound less threatening. I managed to sneak past a security guard playing a game on his mobile phone. And I had infiltrated Columbia. After any- uh... If he get called, it's over. Entering the People's University for Palestine, I learned that everyone here was on high alert if you weren't pre-approved press. Unless you've been media trained by the voice of the boundaries, and just know like we're we're getting we are improving our like ability to take care of people's privacy. Still working. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you got it. I focused on observing as much as I could without raising too much suspicion. And luckily enough, I had arrived just in time for a speech and an interpretive dance. Shame! Damn. We just wanted to like show the message here the importance of like showing the ties between Colombia and these companies. So for example, Black Rock, who we all hate, Chevron, Airbnb. is we want to free Palestine and showing out the numbers really exposes 
we have the power. Despite the sheer number of protesters out here, they're almost unanimously masked up and uninterested in sharing their thoughts on what this camp stood for. Hi there. Can I see what's inside? Uh, I think this are. is such a good thing. Are there people in there? Uh, there are people in there. Oh, I see. I see, okay. What what does it offer? Because it's such a peaceful protest. I think it's such a good thing. Yeah, so there's a bunch of different providers around okay. here. Uh, just uh, of the nature of being a college protest. Okay. Uh, I'm an EMT. We have some okay. first responders. We have uh, doctors, nurses. We're not operating in any official capacity, but the idea is even if there are necessarily um, like violent injuries, which thank God there are not. There have been none, right? Uh, yeah, okay. it's just that... Uh, Originally, someone had a seizure when we did not have any tents up because of the heat. And since then, we've decided to just like consolidate a bunch of different like medical supplies and medical responders. Oh shit, who is she? She like security, man. She pulled up like a pit bull, bruh. She gotta relax. <laughs> nah, she got two hustle. She give me PTSD and I'm just sitting at home watching this. I can't do it, man. Who? All they is. All they was doing was like giving just a little interview. Just telling the people how the whole protest happened, how it came about, what's the cause for the protest, what's going on. Is and out. Let's give me a little information. She didn't got hostile. What did you gonna do? Just in case sense. anyone needs some help. Yeah. You good? Yeah, I'm good. Are you recording? Hi there. Yeah. Just been walking recording? around. Oh yeah, I walked up. I was just recording. Yeah, we don't want any recording oh, around. Okay. The yeah, sorry, I thought I you were just asking. Okay. Just trying to show how peaceful this is. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I appreciate your time. Thank yeah. you. Yet, as I had my headshot taken by this dude, the hypocrisy was obvious. Oh. They like paparazzi. Thank you. Okay. As lunchtime began, I was impressed to witness a compliance test in real time as the protesters echoed the lunch options to their comrades. But given that I was not pre approved press, my cover was eventually blown. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. While the liberated zone seemingly voiced unanimous support for Palestine, I found these dudes in the back holding an American flag. You guys are all students at um, Columbia here? Yes, sir. Are you guys uh, Jewish? No. No? No. Stepping back up for America. You know, we're back, baby. We're not going to let this country fall. These things, like, you got. I don't even know what's going on right here. Like, it's, it's a lot really going on in one area. You got them over here protesting. You got like these niggas right here. They not. They ain't a part of nothing. They just trying to free America. They back. They say we back, baby. Standing free. I don't know what they gonna free, but I guess this nigga running for president or something. I don't know. American flags were also burned here. I don't know if it was burned off campus or on campus, uh, but apparently something happened last night. So, what do you think they're protesting they for tripping. or against? What is their objective? I'm not too sure because I don't know if their protesting is going to have anything to do with the war going on over in the Middle East. Most of them probably just want to be affiliated with something. Sure. Most of them have no affiliation with Palestine. They don't really want to talk to anybody. That's you know, Captain America. Young, young kids, you know, a little immature. They don't really know how to handle something like this. I don't really my boy that in the much. Back. I uh, credit them for their. Uh, um, their devotion and their loyalty for what they're doing, but I think they're a little bit um, misinformed on how to actually get things done. I think they're going about it the wrong way, but honestly, they is tripping, bro. They over there talking about some, yeah, man. All y'all can just come over there. We got the women, we got the money, we got the food, we got the drugs, we got rock and roll, we got the soul. I know that's what y'all love the soul, rock and roll. Niggas telling us to come over there, man. We don't know what y'all doing. 
but I, I, I do respect they, uh, I respect the way they protest. I, I mean, I, I don't respect the way they protest, but I respect the protest because they fighting for a good cause. They trying to free the people, but the way they going about it, man, they tripping. You want us to come with you when y'all trying to free the people? I don't really care about that. I just have to do it with the flag. This is Not USA being. rally right here. That's right, yep. Okay. USA rally. Uh, ben Burkwam, Real America's Voice News. I think uh, God bless these guys for being up here. And what one of the guys said, the, the people here don't appreciate. We got these guys down here, uh, I would say mostly misguided. They want to destroy this country from within. We're in a battle for the future of our nation. Navy? And this is evidence of that. College campuses across America that have allowed leftist, communist, America haters to take it over. And this is what you get. And if we don't stand up as a country, we're going to lose this nation. Uh, you go to Columbia? Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Hey, bro, I don't think we're going to lose this nation for no one situation right there, bro. That one protest ain't going to get us up out of here. They just trying to protest for some, for some peace. That ain't going to get us out of here, bro. Some of them are going to go to jail because they out here tripping, but it's not going to on this protest. I mean, honestly, if they didn't call for the murder of my entire family and all of my friends, I think it would have been like pretty wicked cool. But I think people like oh, being nah, on my tripping. lawn and like crying for the murder of my family is not not very. Oh, no, I was just with y'all for a minute, but uh, y'all tripping. Y'all ain't gonna get no uh, y'all ain't gonna get what y'all trying to ask for doing crazy stuff like that. Niggas, <laughs> these niggas wildin' bro. What them people do to y'all? They ain't do nothing. Talking about you gonna kill them people, man. In GTA, you tripping. I ain't gonna get no peace like that, bro. They bringing out negativity. Yeah, it's getting wild, dog. Not very cool. I personally, I got spit on for speaking Hebrew they on speak campus. No people? When was this? This was like right after October 7th. All of my Israeli friends, most of my Jewish friends, were too scared to go on campus. I just came down from downtown, thought I'd read a little. Robert, I don't know if you know, but Robert Kraft kind of pulled out. I saw that. A significant Jewish donor. I don't think Jews can be here if they feel unsafe on this campus. It's not cool. And I'm like, I love protests. Yeah. I'm a big protest guy. But um, this is this is scary. You got to let it's not recorded. Turn it on. So we agreed to community guidelines by virtue of walking in. Is this how this works? Yeah, I guess. Okay. I don't know. Well, we didn't sign anything. No, this is my lawns. I pay for these lawns. You pay what, 90 grand a year to come here? Yeah, I pay a lot of money, man. You pay full tuition? Um, yeah, a little bit of financial aid. So behind us as well, we have... Hello. We're just walking through. Thank you. Okay. Besides the implicit community guidelines concept, I would say a relatively chill experience. I think my time has come. Okay. I get the tents? Um, no, well, is there, go it's the like end. impossible to avoid people's faces I if see. they're filming the tents. I can't even just record? Well, I mean, when you came in, you agreed to the community guidelines, right? And so one of the Did I sign something? No, you didn't say you didn't Oh, I see. Well, I'm just... It is true. Yeah, I see. Okay, that makes sense. After witnessing the Columbia Liberated Zone, before protesters broke into a building, were arrested by NYPD, and the camp was- My gosh, see bro? If it's anything I learned, like, being around the Freddie Gray protests, the riot, it was like, they came together, but niggas was wilding. These niggas wildin'. Now I do feel like if you ain't being heard, you gotta you gotta figure something out. But tearing up the community, you ain't gotta tear up the community. You ain't gotta tear up the community. These niggas, but now nah, they now they tripping. They breaking in the cribs. 
They probably steal the TVs, computers, laptops. You name it. Jury. Knowing them, they probably steal the paper towels or something like that. Tissue. Food. Snake's tripping. Shut down. I met up with Ahmed in the Muslim capital of America, Dearborn, Michigan, and Rabbi Yoni in the Jew capital of America, Crown Heights, Brooklyn, to better understand both sides of this conflict by entering communities that have brought their culture from the Middle East and maintained it in the U.S. Let's go to the synagogue. Let's go to the synagogue. All right. So out of all Hasidic groups, we delve deeply into the thought and understanding of why did God create the world in the first place? And what does it mean to have a soul? And what's our greater mission to the outside world? How do we see non-Jews or non-Hasidic Jews. So we headed into the synagogue that made national news a few months ago for illegally expanding the synagogue. And for this. It's open to the public. Yeah, we're going right in. All right. So how many people come in here every day, would you say? On a daily basis, thousands. Thousands? It's hustling and bustling. So here they're doing the afternoon prayers. Okay. Of Mincha. So they're, um, we pray three times a day, morning, afternoon, and evening. So he's doing the afternoon prayers. And yeshiva study going on here. Prayers, learning, charity, look at all these charity boxes. Right now it's kind of empty in here. If you come back to our prayer service. This is empty? This is empty. So during Passover this is going to be packed. Packed. You wouldn't even be able to stand there. There would be thousands of people there. So the situation overseas, there was no security when we walked in. Is it dangerous to be here on a day-to-day -day basis? Does stuff go down? We have God as our security. Okay. The Garden of Israel doesn't slumber nor sleep. Oh man, I... I I was scared for a minute. Talking about the stuff go. Hey man. We need like a little bit of 4K action to what go down there late at night. Cause hey man. Police pull up going crazy. We gotta see that. Interesting. So you don't have any safety concerns? No, you know, we don't try to be reckless and we're not, there There are, you know. I Hold up, wait. They need some security too. All them people coming in and out there. You got strangers. They don't tell them what them strangers up to. Capable of doing. They could be like, some of them could be the ops. They need some, some good eyes on the walls in there. If he don't lose one, that ain't right. He needs some people behind him. As you saw outside, there is uh, there is NYPD. NYPD and the local sort of patrol that keeps an eye. So there is an eye, there's cameras. Is it okay. a dangerous time to be a Jew the from police. your perspective? Absolutely not. It's never a dangerous time. As a Jew, we have to be proud of who we are. Realize we have a mission. We're called the chosen people. And the reason we're called the chosen people is because God said, I want one nation to teach the rest of the world. And you're chosen, yeah. just like you have a teacher in the classroom and you have students. So God chose us and God said to tell the world a special message. He told us to be an Arla Goyim, a light unto the nations. Right now, everyone here is in exile. I like that. Yes. The Jews were in the Holy Land a couple thousand years ago. The Babylonians sort of kicked them out and they were dispersed to all four corners of the globe. Where did the... Hey, you know what? I was wrong, man. It's a lot of peace going on in here, so he shouldn't have to worry about no negativity coming in and out of that building. It's a lot of love, unity, positivity. I like that. Expansion happened. Oh, Is it that, downstairs? That, no, that's over there. Oh, see? it's literally right over there. We have that plywood over there. You see how it's different than the rest? Right over there. Yeah, right there. Oh, so they sealed it off. Yeah, they filled it up. They put cement, and people were very upset. They thought it was anti cementism. <laughs> and so you see it's a busy place and you're not getting the feeling how packed it is and then the last decade it's you know completely grown in size so you need more room obviously like a lot of stories it gets blown out of proportion what's one thing you think uh, uh, people misunderstand about Hasidic Jews could be sometimes a person comes over and we're not nice to them it's not it's not because we're not nice we try to be nice to everyone and there's nothing wrong of us everyone is different yeah people think that we're closed and we don't we're we like to live in our community and the community lives lives together we're, we're basically one we're all one everything is for one 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 reason to make God happy 
do you think the, the fundamental source of anti-Semitism is? Because the Jews are successful and they have a way of thinking in the right direction and they're successful. While the Jewish community is seemingly hated more than ever right now, with the exception of the Holocaust, of course, the Muslim community is facing accusations of being homophobic, violent, and terroristic, and this protester in Dearborn recently did not help. Malcolm X said, and I quote, we live in one of the rottenest countries that, have ever, that has ever existed on this earth. It's not Genocide Joe that has to go. It's the entire system that has to go. Quiet struggle over identity is playing out in Muslim communities nationwide, advocates say. No. Dearborn has been leading the conversation, a model of peaceful coexistence between Christian, Jewish, and Muslim Americans thriving together. Many Dearborners grieved the dead on 9-11-2001. Outsiders have used the city over the past 20 years as a state. This is a whole different video from the Tummy G video. Matter of fact, this is something a little different from the last people he just interviewed. They tripping for conspiracy theories, bigotry, and hate. This community has been the epicenter of anti-Muslim hate and xenophobia. I think Islam hates us. We got Sana, Dr. Khalid, we got the professional tasks. We got everything insulated in the community. We are in little Middle East out here, which is cool. Shout out the United States of America. This is one of the few places in the good. world, I feel like, where you can have a melting pot of all of these cultures. Where do you think people got the idea that Islam was a religion of violence and not peace? That one fucking president. George Bush? Yeah. There is some hate here and there, but at the same time, you just avoid it. You know? How is it being a Muslim in 2024? For me, it's pretty simple, but for the younger ones, it is kind of difficult. I don't know if you guys heard about a year ago or two years ago there was an incident where books were placed in the library in the private public schools nobody knew about it until somebody came like on gay books yeah. like how to have sex like anal sex for yeah. yes yeah what the fuck yo what why would you put that in the in the in in, in, in the library for them kids just damaging their brains bro that's wild Oh, okay, all right. They're not meant to be in public schools. I see. This is for me? Okay, that's cool. It ended up in my hands. Yeah. Got a copy of the Quran. I'm going to read this. Okay. Thank Any you so questions? much. This would be cool to see what's going on here. So, um, could we interview you? We're trying to learn more about the town and the Muslim faith. Of course. It's peaceful. It's yeah. very peaceful. The national media portray Dearborn like not a city in America. Really? On the contrary. Uh, everything is like any other city. Very diverse. You can see a church. Yeah, we saw the Orthodox. Yes. Yes. The bar. And it's a great city to raise a family. You have Lebanese, Yemenis, Iraqis, as far as Middle Eastern, Palestinians, Jordanians. It's a melting pot. Yeah. Yeah. You hear a lot of uh, interesting things, especially on Fox News. You get so much uh, hate in the city. See, but I told you, man, all we had to do was hear their side of the story. Can't be out here preaching, you know? We don't even know what's going on. Seems like some lovely people right here. Some great people. Great guys, great women. But if you come down here, it's honestly one of the most hospitable, lovable communities you'll ever see. People literally follow themselves just to try to help somebody out. It's a great town, great area to raise a family, kids. Why do you think Dearborn became a Muslim hub? I think uh, because of the more population of the Arabics, you know, the Middle Eastern. So yeah, most of them, they, they feel like they are back home in the country, you know what I'm talking about? You can see just, they, they walk in with, uh, with the scarves, they walk in with, you know. It's like a tight country within yep. a country. Yep, 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 yep. Um, I have friends of mine that are Jewish, that are Christian, that are Hindu, everybody, if, uh, food brings everybody together, so Man. everybody loves Dearborn. <laughs> so it's all love out here. Yes, yes, yes. It's not like some warring religious factions against each other. Uh, I don't know. Take a look. Seems pretty peaceful. <laughs> We're gonna meet up with our buddy Ahmed. Which one? That's a great question. <laughs> there he is. Ahmed, how you doing? We're trying to meet some locals before you came here. Nice. I see you came to the right place. Ahmed, how are you? I'm doing good. Hey, how you doing, man? Free and treats? Yo, I really appreciate that. Yeah. 
Thank you. No, you, no, you got Habibi. Wallah, thank you. Hey, Look at this community. Yeah, we met. Hospitality is huge, yeah. bro. It's, this is awesome. Thank you. While both the Jewish and Muslim communities extended extreme hospitality to me and generous gifts like this fedora. Oh, yeah. So this could be worn brim down like that. That is cool. And free food at this Yemeni's cafe. That look good. good. Bro, this is like a fruit explosion. Why explosion, man? Come on, why would you pick that term? <laughs> <laughs> I was even invited to a party where they circumcised the Jewish baby. Welcome everybody. These were complete strangers who let me come to their family gathering and eat their food. We walked in. Nice. You guys Ain't tolerated none. me even walking into this? I'm kind of amazed. Why would we not tolerate you? Well, I'm not a Jew. So what? Uh, God created many things in this world. Non-Jews also. The beautiful thing about the Hasidic community, and specifically this one, is uh, it's a family. Everyone looks out for each other. You're never left alone, because that's what Judaism is about. Caring for each other, looking out for each other, not just Jewish people. But everyone. Both communities showed me extreme love and kindness, despite the fact that I was a complete outsider. Uh, there seems to be a little bit of fear of me, a misrepresentation of Dearborn. Yeah. Why is that? Well, I mean, if you take a look at the news right now, for example, with what's going on with the war between uh, Israel and Palestine, if you say you don't want people to be murdered, what can we do to minimize this or stop this? It's like they're throwing that terrorist label out so quick. And I think that's why a lot of people are really cautious because it's becoming very, you know, to label someone as a terrorist is a very serious crime. You know, it's not a joke by any sure. means. That's where a lot of the fear is stemming from. And I think with the amount of stress that people are facing in this economy, there's there's not much <laughs> difference between hopefully my life and any of the viewers' life. Yeah. You're pretty much working to pay bills and try not to get obese, you know? There's not much time to create terrorist <laughs> activities. Yeah, well, so we're joking about that is yeah. that a real thing out here when you see videos where it's like if you want to support stop bombing stop the killing of children stop you know just simmering things down and then boom they're labeled as a terrorist that's kind of crazy right that, that kind of hinders the whole point of free speech and from my perspective what you see is you know you have certain actions that were committed on both ends okay. between israel and palestine and you have your, your war initiated what people are saying is hey it's often for countries to have a back and forth uh, militarily between each other, but to continue an onslaught of children and women and families who are not fighting or not in war, that's where a lot of people, including myself, think the line should be drawn. Considering all the different stereotypes, hatred and confusion, I headed to the local mosque to talk with a sheikh to learn more about what Islam was actually really about and what he thought about the current state of the world as it relates to Muslims and Jews. I believe we have a Catholic church and then we have an Orthodox church right over there. This is a pretty impressive array of very different religions worshiping in very close proximity. This is optimistic right here. This is um, indicative of some world peace coming soon. Yeah, the shoes come off if we don't do it. Okay. Allah knew that not all mankind will follow one religion, which is Islam, right? Islam means that to submit peacefully to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He made things subjected for you. And yeah, Allah created this universe to revolve around the human being. Everything was created to serve this human being. Allah is saying that, oh, my servant, I created everything for you, created you for me. My name is Muhammad Ayad, yes, yes. And you're an imam. Usually they call us either Sheikh or Sayyid. Sheikh when you wear a white turban, Sheikh uh, Sayyid when you wear a black one. It's different when you wear a black one, then you're one of the grandchildren of the Prophet himself. I think when it comes jurisprudentially, the Jews are the closest religion when it comes to Islam. Moses' story in the Quran mentioned in 900 verses, and 163 times the name Moses was mentioned in the book Quran. I think in Gaza, uh, also Christians, all the churches were destroyed. Jews, I can't blame the Jews for that as a Muslim. It's more about the fake political Jews plus fake political Christians plus fake political Muslims. So I don't think the war in the Middle East is between Muslims and Jews. It's, it is a completely religious war. But in stark contrast, YouTube's most popular rabbi back in Brooklyn disagreed. Can you explain what's going on in Israel and how that relates to Judaism and Islam or maybe the differences between those beliefs? Hamas celebrates the success of their raid. We successfully raped and, and decapitated babies, that shows that God is on our side and we are the good people. How does that, 
How, how does that make any sense? The religious issue very simply is, Israel is an inheritance. God gave it to Abraham as an inheritance. He made it very clear for you and your children for all time to come. An inheritance you cannot conquer. The only way that Israel can belong to you is if you inherit. The, the Muslims believe that they are the inheritors of this land because Abraham's oldest son is Ishmael, and they are descendants of Ishmael. And is that corroborated by holy texts or the, the Torah or the Quran? What confirms that belief for them? Nothing. Okay. Imam Ali, when he was giving the final will to his sons, Imam al Hassan and Hussein, he told them always stand against the oppressor, and whether they are in Ukraine, Palestinians, Americans that they suffered somewhere, we always stand with these individuals. We are not like aggressive, we are not violent. I expect from the one who has more power to be more wise, to have more strict rules that they abide by and follow. There are no Palestinian people before 1967. There are Muslims who are Arabs, claim to be descendants of Ishmael, and therefore the land belongs to them. And that's why there will be no two-state solution, because as far as they're concerned, the entire country belongs to them. So what does it mean? Israel will give them Gaza? You're giving me my land? It's insulting. Now, the real truth is, there are no descendants of Ishmael. Why? because they're all intermarried. It's just interesting and fascinating. All these people who are marching in the pro-Palestinian, pro-Hamas rallies, and they're screaming and they're shouting and they're carrying these banners, then they go home. <laughs> what do they do when they go home? Uh, they, f they forget about it. Yeah. No. They couldn't care less. Do you think many people believe Islam means terrorism? I think it's still in the subconscious of a lot of people out there since as a Muslim, I was in Lebanon when, when ISIS came to Syria and we suffered in some in our capital Beirut from some explosions there because of ISIS. I was able to experience some of their activities. If I wasn't well educated Muslim that actually I studied the Quran in depth and the words of Prophet Muhammad in his household, I might get a bad image about Islam. I see. Because unfortunately it's it was a shocking to see individuals like actually they believe if they bomb themselves they will go and eat lunch with the Prophet. Some of them they found spoons in their pocket. It's, it sounds funny, Ooh. unfortunately, and you might cry at the same time, but look at the level of ignorance. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. It is crazy. Because if you kill yourself, how you going to meet them? You out of here. You going to sacrifice yourself to go beat somebody. You ain't even going to get step two. Because you done. Yo, that's wild. Ignorance. Unfortunately, um, we we read we read some articles saying that a lot of them these thoughts were instilled inside their heads when they were six years old or seven years older. The Germans write to Germany. Sure. They took it from somebody, and that's fine. Just not Israel. Are we even debating this? We beat you up in '67 and we took your land. That's it. That's ours now. And if we beat you up, we'll take Gaza. It'll be ours like every other country in the world. No, you're an occupier. We're not occupiers, we're conquerors. Look at what we're fighting over. A small chunk of land? It's, it, it's ridiculous. Because I believe um, the world now is is being um, divided into two camps. There's the camp of, of people that they are actually, they actually really, they want peace and justice to happen among all mankind. Those are the majority to be positive and optimistic. And there is the minority where they are also Muslims, let me call them fake Muslims, fake Christians, fake Jews, that those individuals, they just, they want to gain themselves, the eye, to feed the eye, ego, arrogance, greed. If we had more youth, um, empower, I think things will, will become more calmer. I hope that the youth of this generation can make a major and big difference in the future and not follow the footsteps of the previous generation. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the minorities, that they are just seeking power, like one of the, I think one of the... I like that what he just said, man. I like that. I like that, because they look for peace. This whole video, we've been looking for peace. I got a headache, I've been looking for peace. Took two pain pills earlier. 
look for peace. They told them not all, but I don't think they're working like that. I'm looking for peace. He deserves some peace. The um, philosophers. I respect it. He said, if the human is following his desires, if he owned the world, he will be looking at the skies. So conquering the universe, you know? Given the importance of the youth, I went across the street from the mosque to the middle school where a lot of these kids are actually refugees from the Middle East. Salam alaikum. Hi. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having us. Oh, thank you for coming. All right. So I'm here with? Everybody, my name is Suhaila Amen, and I'm the office administrator at Riverside Academy West. We're going to take a walk through our building, which is a middle school and high school here in Dearborn, Michigan, epicenter of Arab America. So what's going on here? These kids learn do we have Arabic teachings at, at play here? Yes, we okay. do provide Arabic uh, language classes. That's one of the benefits of coming to this particular public charter building. The large refugee population, students who've been coming from war-torn countries. The majority of our students are Muslim okay. and they practice their faith. So we do have an opportunity that allows students to pray while they're in the building. Okay. You had the first waves in the 30s and 40s, which was like my grandfather, my great-grandfather came here in 19. So you had people coming, seeking a better opportunity, seeking, you know, have, living that American dream. And then you had another influx during the 50s and 60s, and then and again in the 70s, 80s. And then what we saw in that fourth wave were during the 90s and 2000s were as a result of war. But we have had a recent influx of Syrian and Yemeni refugees that we've seen coming in, especially within the Syrian communities. And it's unfortunate because some of these kids have never seen the inside of a classroom. You guys wanna say what's up? Hey. What are you guys learning? Oh my gosh, bro. Yeah. Oh, we do, I love you, do, I know, hey, I know. Hey, watch it. <laughs> Where are you guys learning right now? Some Arabic right now. Arabic? How do you guys like the school? Uh, it's nice. It's my first day. Is your I mean, first day? Like, it's my first year. Yeah. Okay. I moved. Yeah. Where are you from? I'm Andrew from got Yemen. motion. Yemen? Ooh, get on. <laughs> Where are you guys from? Iraq. Yemen, yeah. Syria. Syria? Yeah. Hi, YouTube. Yeah, say what's up to you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Alright, bye guys! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Subscribe! Yeah, yeah. Alright. Y'all heard the man subscribe for the kids. Subscribe. Subscribe! For the kids. Alright, brother. Thank you yes. so much for having us. Where can the people find you and can they see your business? Thank you, yes. So we're Big Time Graphics. DM me on Instagram if you guys need anything. Our IG is Big Time Graphics. At the end is two S's. You can find us on YouTube at Hanging with Hasidics. And you could book a tour of our Crown Heights Hasidic community. Go behind the scenes. We'll open many closed doors. Also, whoever has the most viewed TikTok or YouTube short using a clip from this video, I'll send you $500. Post however many times you want, but you must tag my TikTok slash YouTube at and put YouTube Tyler Oliveira in the title slash description. I've been calling this nigga Andrew and his name Tyler. Sorry, bro. W video. <laughs>